Good evening, everyone. This is Dorothea Airpus Creations 2021. I hope everybody had a good day today. And let me start with a Tao or Sen quotation, which reads, There is a revolution that needs to happen and it starts inside each one of us. We need to wake up and fall in love with the earth. Our personal and collective happiness and survival depends on it. I thought that's pretty nice. So I like to like to share that with you. And I also like to share something else before we start, which is a smoothie. I did a, took a sip or two or three. This smoothie is coconut water, lime, a slice of pineapple, a handful spinach, a handful fresh basil, a small cucumber, and then you can add a stevia leaf or you might add some maple syrup or a little bit honey to sweeten the smoothie. But in my case, I didn't use anything to sweeten it because the pineapple made it sweet enough. Okay, so let me have a sip to the health of you all. And then let's start. Zoroastrianism. The man who founded it, Zoroaster, also called Zarathustra, is born into a well to do family in ancient Persia, called today Iran. In the 6th century BCE. Zoroaster grew up in a region what now is northeastern Iran or southwestern Afghanistan. At around age 30, Zoroaster is having a divine vision while he participates in a pagan purification rite. This divine vision leads him to his belief in a supreme being, a god named Ahura Mazda. At the time, Persia had polytheism, meaning many gods, and the pagan purification rites sacrificed animals and the priests engaged in drinking haoma, H-A-O-M-E, also called magic drink. This magic drink was a recycled haoma, still strong enough to make the priests high. Zoroaster didn't approve of such pagan rites and he didn't approve of the priests, priests being intoxicated by drinking haoma and by performing animal sacrifices. After Zoroaster had his divine vision, leading him to a supreme being called Ahura Mazda. He becomes the founder of this new religion called Zoroastrianism, the only monotheistic religion at the time in all Persia. From now on, there is only one God being the ruler of Zoroastrians 
And this one God is symbolized by pure light, the light of the sun. The symbol for this new religion is fire. Fire is seen as the symbol of purity and it is called light of God. Monotheism means one God, but the God of Zoroastrianism is not a God or deity in human form. Ahura Mazda is the source of truth, the pure light. There is also a counterpart, a evil spirit, and this spirit is called Ariman. H A H R I M E N. Zoroastrianism is called religion of ethics because it believes in good and evil and calls the good spirits Spenta Mainu and the evil spirits Ankra Mainu. There is also the battle going on between these two spirits and also between Ahura Mazda, the god, and Ahriman, the evil one. But the battle is always won by the pure light of the sun, Ahura Mazda. Zoroastrianism too, Zoroastrians, not Astrian, Zoroastrians, the people, the followers of this religion, too, must choose between good and evil. If they choose good, the outcome will be good in the end. But if they choose bad or evil, the outcome in the end is also bad. Good spirits of Zoroastrianism follow the way of God and also spend Mainu. And evil spirits of Zoroastrianism follow the evil and this is Ankra Mainu. Good spirits are found in agriculture, in animals, and in the truth of the words spoken. Evil spirits are found in the old pagan practices of the priests, sacrificing animals and getting intoxicated by the so-called magic drink, Haoma. From now on, Zoroastrianism does not perform rituals or ceremonies without the presence of a sacred fire. Because fire is important, the rituals are performed in so-called fire temples. And these temples have priests wearing masks over nose and mouth to prevent pollution by means of the press of the priest performing the offering. There are no offerings other than priests performing them because normal people cannot directly do it or offer something. It's only done by priests in the fire temple. And the priest is always using a pair of silver tongs to place the offering in the fire. Zoroastrianism forbids a person not being a member of that religion to enter the fire temples. Only members are allowed to attend offerings by priests in these temples. In Zoroastrianism, a person can enter heaven, or rather the soul of the person can enter heaven by having lived a good life and done good deeds. Such a person's soul goes to heaven, where it remains eternally in heaven. 
in the end the good deeds outweigh the bad deeds and determine if a soul enters heaven or hell. After death occurs, the soul of the deceased must cross a bridge called the bridge of judgment. This bridge is called Chinvat Bridge, C-H-I-N-V-A-T, Chinvat Bridge, the bridge of judgment. If the person lived a good life, the bridge becomes wide and invites the soul to pass safely over the bridge because the soul's good thoughts, which are the stars, the soul's good words, which are the moon, and the soul's good deeds, which are the sun, lead the soul over the bridge to the paradise of infinite lights. Such a soul, the good soul, needs the own religion in the form of a beautiful woman, which waits at the bridge to welcome the soul going to heaven. Otherwise, the soul must walk over a very narrow bridge and the soul is met at the end by a hideous hag. Before falling off the bridge into hell. In Zoroastrianism, after death, the body is no longer needed, since only the soul gets to heaven or hell, depending on the deeds of the person who died. There the soul remains eternally, either heaven or hell, because Zoroastrianism forbids to contaminate the elements, earth, fire, water, air, a body cannot be buried or burned, since this would contaminate the earth. That is why Zoroastrianism has a very own way to dispose of their dead. When a person has died, the person receives a so-called sky burial. A sky burial is done in a flat-topped tower called Dagma, D-A-K-H-M-A, or Tower of Silence. Here the corpse of the dead person is put to rest by being exposed to the elements. Now the dead person is placed in the Tower of Silence, awaiting to be taken care of by vultures. Vultures take care of the dead by picking the bones clean. After the vultures pick clean a corpse, what is left is placed in lime pits called ossuaries. I spell it O-S-S-U-A-R-I-E-S. -S -S. Today, Dagmas or Towers of Silence are illegal in Iran. They are forbidden since the 1970s. <clears throat> Thus, Zoroastrians bury their dead beneath concrete slabs. Zoroastrianism not only survived in Iran, but in India as well. When Muslims invaded Persia, many Zoroastrians fled and started anew in India. There, this religion now is called Parsis. I will talk more about it at a later time 
when we explore Hinduism. At the end, I like to list the symbols of Zoroastrianism once more. Fire temples are the holy places of this religion for worship. Fire and water are symbols of purity in that religion. Fire representing light and warmth and it has purifying powers. Fire temples are only for the people following the religion of Zoroastrianism. No stranger is allowed to participate in the worships in these temples. Each fire temple has an altar with an eternal flame burning continuously. There is a legend about the Zoroastrian god Ahura Mazda who according to this legend brought three ancient fire temples to his believers. These three fire temples were known as great fires but archaeologists searching for them could not find them. The evergreen cypress tree, a symbol of eternal life, is recognized by some Zoroastrians as a symbol of their religion as well. The Farafaha, I spell it F A R A V A H E R, is maybe the most important symbol for this religion. It depicts a bearded man with one hand reaching forward. He stands above a pair of wings that are outstretched from a circle, representing eternity. And lastly, the god, Asu, the god Ahura Mazda is also called Vice Lord and Supreme God. Before I close today, I like to share some interesting facts about a well-known man named Freddie Mercury. You all probably know him. He is the famous lead singer of the rock band Queen. Freddie Mercury was a Zoroastrian or Parsi as they are called today. Freddie Mercury's real name was Farrakh Bolsara. When he died in 1991 in London, his funeral was performed by a Zoroastrian priest. There are two more interesting facts which I like to share with you. Ahura Master served as the namesake for the Japanese automaker Mazda Corporation. The company hoped that an association with the name God of Light would brighten the image of their first vehicles, namely Mazda. American novelist George Martin creator of the fantasy series A Song of Ice and Fire, which was later adapted into the HBO series Game of Thrones, developed the legend of Azor Ahai from Zoroastrianism. In the story, a warrior demigod Azor Ahai defeats darkness with the help of a fire god modeled after a Kura master. So, one more. 
Zoroastrianism believes in two birthdays. One is for the day a person is born and one is for the day a person has died. Since the day of a person's death is the birth of the soul into afterlife, where the soul will remain eternally, Freddie Mercury's soul had a birthday on November the 24th of 1991 and now lives eternally in the afterlife. I think that's a beautiful thought. To end the video about Zoroastrianism, I want to quickly talk about the the um, funeral rites, the funeral rites that Zoroastrianism has with the silent towers. People might get shocked when they hear things like that, but we have to see it in the right in the right context and also in the belief of Zoroastrianism. They believe that we have no right to pollute the earth by means of polluting uh, water or air or soil and this is why they cannot or didn't allow back then in the ancient times they couldn't bury the death in the soil and they couldn't uh, burn them either because when you burn them then then the remains go into the air and pollute the air so that was then it makes more sense because I don't want anyone to get shocked now because I like you all to understand it in the right context why they did what they did for them it was logical to avoid the pollution of the elements on earth that's why they did it the way they did it and it's still today the practice is still today done in India there are still towers of silence I think in Mumbai former Bombay they have a community there and they still do it it's still allowed there so there it's still done the way it was done in ancient times okay so I hope I didn't shock anybody with it but I see it like I have to inform you and tell you the things how they really were done and I cannot make just anything up that I like to just to please people that's why I tell the things the way they were done and I hope that you all understand it and sympathize with this religion and you will not get too shocked by it but when you think about it and also at the time this uh, Zoroastrianism became a reality it was a completely different time from today they didn't have yet in Persia a religion with one god they had many many gods in paganism and and the people didn't maybe like it anymore the paganism when they constantly sacrificed animals and priests getting drunk by drinking haoma and things like that so they had they had this uh, wish to find something other than or besides that uh, paganism that would fulfill them and give them spiritual more satisfaction okay so that was for today Zoroastrianism and I didn't know about Eddie Eddie Mercury that he was a Zoroaster that was new for me because that was not in my school notes that I found out by googling to find maybe some new things or to see if my notes from school time are still up to date because it's almost 30 years 
and I thought I didn't want to miss things in my video to talk about in case there was something that in the meanwhile happened so I was I'm glad that I did google it and I found this information about Eddie Mercury and also about the Automega Master. I didn't know that either. I didn't know that a car was, was named after Ahura Master. I think that's a pretty nice thing. I like it and uh, I hope you enjoyed too to learn about it and that's it for today. Okay, so the next time, what was it what I wanted to talk about? It's a surprise. I don't know anymore. Okay, Gilgamesh, Gilgamesh, about that. We talk about that before we go to Hinduism. I talk a little bit something else and then we move in to India and Hinduism. That will be terrible because it's very complicated and I hope I can do it because as I said it's a complicated religion Hinduism but I will have enough time to read the notes and hopefully get important things filtered out and we will learn a little bit about that okay so I wish you all a wonderful evening and I am back on Saturday. Have a wonderful evening. Well, here it's evening. Someplace else it might be something else. Day or night or morning. Wherever you are, enjoy the time and I hope to see you back on Saturday. And thank you very much.